I would encourage everyone to read along with me because I have a lot of scriptures that I want to be talking about. Amen. Uh, notes, girls. That would be great if you yes. take notes. The Bible says don't believe every spirit and test the spirits to see whether or not they are from God. Amen. We are to be like the Bereans who study the scriptures day and night to see what are we saying is that the truth. So don't just take my word for it. But study it yourself. Take Amen. notes. If there's a scripture, then study it for yourselves at home. Uh, Candy, what translation are you reading out of? Are you going back got, and forth? I have ESV and ASV. Okay, just go back and forth. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, I thank you that, well, that you're here with us, Father. The word says that you're omnipresent, that you're that you're here with us wherever we are, that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. So God, I ask that you would intervene, Lord. Lord, I'm nothing, I'm just a sinner in need of your constant grace and mercy every day that walk. Lord, speak through me pain right now because on myself I won't say the right things. I'll stutter, I'll mess up, Lord, but Holy Spirit, take control over the eyes and ears of your people tonight, that long. Let them hear your word that is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, that long. So I pray that your will can be done. Grant repentance tonight. Yes, Lord. May we not hear, devil. May this word not fall on deaf ears, even with me, Father. I hear this stuff so many times, and I still can't comprehend how wonderful and how great you are. But tonight, devil, show us how great and how wonderful you are. In Jesus' mighty name, Tonight. Jesus, Amen. Amen. So God bless all you girls for coming. Don't look at me. <laughs> uh, usually when you hear women's Bible studies, you think that we're going to talk about the woman at the well. We're going right. to talk about all these common things that's known when it comes to women's Bible studies. But I'm just warning you tonight, it's not going to be about that. No. Actually, tonight it's going to be a, a ugly truth. Something that is very hard to take in. Mm. Uh, when I study this, this is why my whole life was turned upside down when I realized the truth of what Scripture has to say. And this truth is not just uh, something that's hidden, but we have to look real deep into it. The Bible makes it clear about the tea that we're going to talk about, total depravity. So it's an ugly truth that no one wants to hear. Romans, I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 through 13 says, The word of God is living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, discerning the hearts and intentions of the heart, and the eyes of him to whom we all must give an account. So the word of God shows us who we are. Amen. We might like to think that we're good people will we'll try to compare ourselves to other people and say, I'm not like, I'm not that bad as this person. Right. But when we look at the word of God, it's like a mirror. And we compare ourselves to the scriptures and we'll see that we're not great like we think we are. We're not, there's a word that goes on, I'm not perfect. Well, the Bible not only shows that you're not perfect, but it also shows that you're not good. You're not right. close to being perfect. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, uh, so what are we talking about tonight? It's the ugly truth. No one wants to hear. Sometimes when we have a truth that we want to tell someone, but we know it's going to hurt them, we try to cover it up with a lie. Oh, it's not like this. Right. It's like this. Not that we don't bad. want to hurt them with the truth. Right. But sometimes if we love someone, we have to tell them the truth in order for them to, to receive it and mm -hmm. to change. So we're going to talk about the doctrine of total depravity or total inability. So this is an essential. This is essential to the to the faith. It shows us who we are, who we are, what we are, where we are, and our need. And um, it really comes down to that: what we need. So unless we understand this truth, we won't accept. We won't appreciate the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we don't understand the bad news, we definitely won't understand the good news. We could go up to someone today and say, the gospel. Jesus died for your sins, he came, he rose on a cross, and the person is going to say, okay, what does that do for me? How does that benefit me? 
Right. So we have to show them the bad news, that there is bad news, that there is a, a wrath of God that is abiding on the unbelievers today. So in order for us to understand this, we have to get rid of everything we think we know. We have to get rid of all the traditions, uh, everything we feel, everything we want, everything we know has to be gone. And we really have to see what does this Bible say about us. Right. So we need to get all of the get rid of all of the traditions and see what the Bible has to say. So we need to know that all of humanity is totally depraved. Totally depraved. What does that mean? And it basically means that man, us, myself, we're morally corrupt. Morally corrupted. We're wicked. We're sinful. Evil. And spiritually dead. Unable to do good. Uh, John MacArthur says that we are all sinners fall short of the glory of God. Know that man is evil, not only in his behavior, but he is evil in his thinking. He's evil in his intentions. Every part of him is infected with evil. He is evil to the core. He is desperately wicked. To borrow the language of Jeremiah the prophet, he is character characterized by sin, iniquity, and transgression. And nothing he does pleases God. This is the biblical definition of the human condition. So he's saying here, man is evil, just to put it straight. He's right. evil and nothing he does can please God. So uh, Betty talked about a few weeks ago, the fall of man. How did we get to this point? Because God, I believe it's in uh, Ecclesiastes, that God made man upright. He looked at man and he said, they are very good, the Bible says. He made man, he breathed the dust into him. He actually formed man. He spoke everything into existence, but with man, he took his hands and he molded him and right. he breathed his own breath into him. And he looked at him and he said, this is very good. But we all know what happened because the enemy came in and he he twisted God's words and she ate of the fruit. And God said, when you eat of this fruit, not if you eat of this fruit. He already knew it was gonna happen. Right. When you eat of this fruit, you will die. So what happened at that point? is they ate of the fruit, they realized their shame, they realized they were naked, they think, and they wanted to go hide themselves. Before, when Adam and Eve, before they sinned, Adam said, this is bone of my bone to eat, this is flesh of my flesh, but as soon as their eyes was open, he looked at Eve, and he told God, well, it was the woman you gave me, Namaswagado, beautiful poem that he's telling her, he's now blaming her. Right. So look what happened to man. They were, they were in a state of innocence. Now they went from that to hiding from God. They ran away from God. They start, they, they ran from him. And there goes with the scripture we're going to read early uh, in a little bit. That They didn't seek after him. It was God that came and said, where are you? Exactly. Because of man on their own, they hide it. They wanted to hide their shame. Amen. Good their point. Will. So Good what point. happened at that point is they spiritually died. They just something went wrong, totally wrong. So this is where we get to total inability. They were totally, they became wicked. Uh, so this means that uh, total total depravity means is that man is not bad as he can be, but he's totally affected in everything, the heart, the mind, the will, our relationship with God. Everything got affected. That's what we mean when we say total, his total being. Right. So what God does is, there's a restraint on sinners today. There's a restraint on wicked people today. There's a restraint on me today. Uh, Romans chapter 1 talks about how God gives people over to their depraved mind. Because naturally we have this wicked mind. So when we, keep, when we keep rejecting God, God will think of a dog on a leash. And he's barking and he's going crazy. And he wants to attack the other dog or something. So... Uh, what God will do is he has the sinner restraining the sinner because on their own we want to fight, we want to kill so God restrains that sinner but Olopohes starts to let them go so that they can be more more uh, they can do what they want to right. do God also gives a restraint on sinners he'll do, he'll use the conscience Romans chapter 2 verse 14 says that he gives us a conscience that will either dismiss us and say that's wrong don't do that or the conscience will say, yeah, do it. You deserve to do it. You deserve to fight back. Right. So our conscience is a restraint that will keep us from not doing things. Wow. 
uh, also to one of the restraints he gives us is our parents. My son is five years old. And if I leave him go to do whatever he wants, that kid will go outside. Tragedy. And he, God, that I kill Adele. What will happen to him? If I leave him go wild in the house, he'll ruin everything. He'll probably set us all on fire. Right. If I don't, where is he? What is he doing? I have to restrain him. I have to hold him back. Even with her, if I let her walk around and I do, disaster get up. So me as a parent, I have to restrain her. I have to pull her back and say, no, I have to get mad at her. You know what, my son. Not only will they do harm to the house, but to themselves, yeah, most to importantly. Themselves. Yeah. Rhea, the other day, uh, she was didn't watch her for a little bit. She fell off the bed. Well, he because choked three times a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as parents, we restrain our kids. My father, my mother did that to me all the time. Yeah. No, don't go with this person. Cause right? You, Even when you get they older. They have to restrain 100%. us. Because when left to ourselves, we want to be free. Exactly. We want to do disaster. We want to do what we Because we have this sinful nature that wants to do that. Uh, another thing he gives us is the laws of God, the Ten Commandments. We know that murdering is wrong because God's law tells us murdering is wrong. Right. We know that lying is bad because our conscience and the law of God tells us that lying is bad. Also, to another restraint that he gives us is the laws of the land. If there wasn't a, I was driving the other day, and uh, I have to constantly look the speed limit because, man, on my own, I want to just fly. Yeah. I want to be, oh, I want to be fast and the furious. Then I have to realize, okay, uh, the speed limit is preventing me, it's keeping me on this way that I can't go past that. Exactly. But if that sign's not there, not just me, but the other drivers will go crazy. Right. So there has to be a, a restraint. A, a line. Don't go past this. Mm -hmm. uh, also, too, another thing with the laws of the land is the stealing, murdering. We know we don't do these things because we'll go to jail. We'll pay the penalty for it. Yep. If you go to a store, like back in the day when I wasn't uh, so much Christian, but I wanted to show off everything. Every time I would go to a store, if I could just... If I could just, you know, if the lights could go off uh, in the store and make the chorab sound, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I think of ways how to chorab, but I know that well, if I get caught, I'll go to jail, I'll do you. this, I'll do that. So I know because the laws of the land say you'll go to jail. So that's a restraint also. Uh, I don't know if you girls ever seen that movie, uh, The Perch. Did you girls ever see that movie, The Perch? Yeah. For one day, there's no loss. Uh -huh. There's no nothing. What does the whole world do? This is the time for me to get my enemy. I want to go kill my enemy. Right. This is the time where I can do whatever I want, and I don't have to go to jail. You see that movie, you'll see a young little girl, a young little puro, puro puri, who was just looking. You would think that they were innocent, but on that day, they're murderers. They lost their minds. They're killers. Yeah. They want to go kill all their uh, enemies. So if we didn't have these restraints on us, these don't do that, the conscience, God, we would be killing everybody. Think about it. It's just, this is not only what the scriptures say, but I know this in my own heart. My conscience testifies that yes, if there was no law to chod up, don't, don't steal, don't do, I would be out there doing everything because that's what I want. I don't want to pay for anything. I want to chod up. I want to fight with my enemies. I want to get back at them. This is just being honest. Everyone here knows that. Uh, Paul Washer says, my favorite pastor, Paul Washer, he says that the human race is more uh, dangerous than the animal kingdom. <laughs> that the human, us, we're more dangerous, but more than the animal kingdom. The animals will fight for their family. They go by their uh, instinct. Yeah. I mean, we want to go everything by because we have pride. Oh, someone looked at me bad, or someone said something bad to me. I want to fight with them. The animal will one time, and it opens, the human just goes on and on and on. They won't let it go. They won't let it go, right? So he says that the humans are more dangerous than the animals. And when you think about that, that's really true. Humans kill other people. You see on the news all day long, even with babies. It, it just, it's, you're starting yeah. to see the evil sinfulness coming out of the person. So for us to say, no, I'm a good person, and that's not true. Look at your heart and you'll even know. No Paul Washer says, if I was to take out your heart, and if I was to put it on the screen, just the thoughts that you had in the last hour, you would run out of this room full from La Jaffe. Because the things that we think of is sinful in themselves. So if, I, if you girls was to see my thoughts and everything, I'll die, I'll go, oh my God. 
But the sad thing is, is that all of us think that way. Yeah. We that, might think. Doesn't it say in the Bible that sometimes yeah. the words that come out of your mouth is what's in, in the, the heart. heart? It's in the heart. That's right. It's from yeah. the, what's in the heart. So uh, it's bad. The sinfulness of man is really bad. So uh, what happened in the garden is the effect of it. The effect, what actually happened when God says you will die. What does that mean? So first I wanna, I'm going to take it in two parts. I'm going to show how it affected us with God and how it affected us with man. Okay. So the first thing that happened was uh, when it comes to our relationship with God and our relationship what happened with us and then our relationship with man. So what happened with us with God, Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, Your sins have separated you from God. Man and Adam was in one fellowship together. They was having communion with each other. They was talking and walking with each other. But when sin happened, uh, Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, Your sins have separated you from God. I believe it's in uh, what's that? Colossians. Colossians says that we were alienated from God. Yeah. Perfect communion. Now we're separated. But not just in the you are your way and I'm my way, yes, but now we're going to see later in a little bit how it's a, it's a, it's an enemy. God, and we're enemies with God now. He's our enemy and we're his enemy. Right. That's what the Bible says. So we have been separated. We're no longer in full communion with God, but we're separated with God. Uh, another thing that happened is that we became spiritually dead. Uh, uh, Ephesians 2.10 says that you were dead. No, Ephesians 2 says that you were you were dead in your trespasses. Now, what is a dead person? What could a dead person do? Nothing. Nothing. They're dead. My past put all funny things around the world. You know what the Greek word is for dead? What? Well, dead. Dead. <laughs> it just means dead. What, I mean, how else can we explain it? And the Bible is saying that this is, a, this is us. Prior from being converted... From being born again, the Bible says that we are dead, that there is nothing that we can do to ever please God, that we're unable to do anything. So we're spiritually dead. Uh, the other thing is that we are unable to understand the things of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, no, 2 Corinthians 2.14 says that the, the natural man cannot understand the things of God. Doesn't that make sense with a right. dead person? They can't understand, they can't do anything, they're just there. They're just there, they're yeah. Just there. No matter how much you try to talk to them, try to wake them up, they're dead in their trespasses and sins, spiritually dead. Uh, another thing that happened with us and God is that we cannot please God. Romans 8, 8. Well, it says that the, the flesh cannot please God. Another thing is that we are unable, while it, this all comes back to being spiritually dead. We can't please God, and we are unable, we can't, and we won't seek after God. Um, Romans 3 verse 10 says, no one is good, no not one. Right. No one is righteous, no not one. No one seeks for God. It's so clear right there. No one is able to seek for God. Nobody wants to seek for God, us in our natural state. We want to be the ones killing everybody. We want to be the ones that says, I want what I want. Uh, I think it's in Proverbs, I forget where it is, that says that that uh, there's a way that seems right to a man. That we want to do what's right in our own eyes. We don't want to seek after God. We want to seek after our sin. We want to love our sin rather than love God. So it says that we are unable to seek after God. But yet we say there's people saying, "No, I do see God. I do. I don't have to. I don't have to be spiritually born again. I did it. I chose God. I did this. I did that." Well, according to this verse, it says that nobody seeks for God. Nobody wants God. I think it's uh, John chapter three, nineteen, or somewhere around there says that uh, that we love the darkness rather than light. Amen. That we don't come to the light lest our deeds be exposed. So we as sinners, we have all these grata, like we said earlier, we're sin, we're dead in our sins, and we love our sin rather than God. So the reason why we don't want to come to God is because if we come to Him, all our deeds will be exposed. And yep. God will say, that's not good, give it away. And He'll say, no, but I love my sin. 
So naturally, in our state, we don't seek after God, but we seek after what's evil or the bad. So we have to really examine that no one seeks for God. It's a big thing. This, do we believe this? When the Bible says about ourselves, ask yourself, I don't seek after God. I don't want God. I want sin rather than God. Yeah. This is prior from being born again and being a believer. Now the reason why we don't seek after God is because as Romans 130, 129 through 130 says that we are haters of God. That we're haters of God. Romans 5 verse 10 says that we are enemies of God. So we're haters of God, we're enemies of God, and we don't seek after Him. And that we love darkness rather than light. Now you might think, I never hated God. That's not true, I never hated God. But our actions tell us differently. Our actions will confirm, you will know by the, you'll know by the, you'll know a tree by its fruit. Our actions will say, I don't want God, I don't seek after God. You'll say, I love my sin rather than God. Uh, want these to go to, uh, just just right here real fast Genesis 37 Genesis 37 uh, verse 4 Genesis 37 verse 4 this is about Joseph and his brothers now why am I going here because you're going to see a good point right here Genesis 37 verse 4. When his brothers saw that their father loved him, meaning Joseph, more than all his other brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him, or could not speak a kind word to him, because they hated him. So when the Bible says that we are haters of God, that's coming from the, the we can't seek after God, we don't want to seek after God, because we're naturally haters of God. It's a big, big thing to know that. And to examine your heart and say, wow, when I see this, I, wow. And I had to really think, and I said, yes, yes, that's true. I love my sin rather than God. That's true. So when the Bible says that we don't seek after God, it's coming from because we are haters and enemies of God. This is what the Bible says. It can't get any more true. When the Bible says that it's sharper than any two, it, just, it really cuts you because you, you tend to think of yourself as this good person. Well, I'm not like this guy or like this guy. You're comparing. When you compare sin. yourself to other people. But then when you realize what the Bible says about you, you're shocked. Yeah. It really cuts you. It really you know, it makes you analyze yourself. So mm -hmm. Romans 5.10 says that we are enemies of God. And Rome, uh, John 3.20 says that we love the darkness rather than light. Jesus, God, he's known as the light. He's known as the father of lights. God is light. And yet we hate the light mm. because the light will tell us you're doing wrong, you're, yep. you're messing up, you're being evil, and the darkness will keep us in that dark place. We It'll just hide want to it. Sin. Yeah. Like I said earlier, if the place was dark, I was going to put out stuff because no one could yeah. see. If I go to God where the light is, everybody could see. God could see most of all. So this is our state when it comes with God. We are separated from God. We're spiritually dead. We don't want the things of God. We don't even understand the things of God. Because the natural man can't understand the things of God. We don't want to understand the things of God. We don't even seek after Him. And there's a hatred for Him. Because we hate Him, we're enemies of God. We don't want to seek after Him. So that's just, there's so much more we could read on that. But just to, to go short. That's a pretty bad place to be with, with God. Yeah. People don't know that they hate God. They're just scared that if they let go of everything they do, they're going to become because... This is the way I'm supposed to be. This is what God wants me to do. So they're happy doing what they're doing. Right? They're scared of letting go. Right? Yeah. I mean, we could try to cover it up with all the good works and let me make my good outweigh my bad, but God, we're going to see there later is no on such that God's thing. saying that there is a heart problem here. Yeah. Or sometimes when people say, I seek after God, but it's not the God of the Bible. It's the God that we made up in our own image. Yep, the Bible says that, we're, that we can make up idols of God. We could make up this God that's like a Santa Claus, that's like, right. a, I just love you and just peace and harmony. But we know that the Bible says that God is sovereign. He's holy. He's righteous. He's just. He 
he's just. It's a big thing, like a just judge. When we look at scripture and examine who God is, he literally says, I bring sickness and I heal. I kill and I make alive. Exactly. People will tell us so many times, I don't worship your God. Like, right, but we have God. a different God like right? them. Yeah. That's your God. That's not my God. My God is this, this, that, the list of all these characteristics. Well, that's not the God of the Bible. They don't look at the God of wrath, the God of justice, the right. God of right. It's just right. my God is love, my God is faithful. Well, there's more attributes to God than just the ones. God is not trail mix. You can't just right. pick the attributes you want. Of him. Or they might say, isn't it enough that I know that there is a God, and I know there's a God, but they don't read anything else. Well, the Buddhas say that they believe in God. Right, everyone believes in God. in God. Right? And then when you ask someone, do you believe in Jesus? Most of the time, people's going to say yes. But what Jesus is it? There's the prophet Jesus, there's the Jesus who's a, the Mormons say yeah. that the, uh, Satan, or Kelodel, Satan and Lucifer are brothers. This is what the Mormons say. So when we talk to someone and say, do you believe in Jesus? They'll say, yeah. And then we'll probably let it go. All right, thank God they're a believer. Right. But if we examine the person, what they believe, you'll come to see that they don't believe in Jesus. I think it's First or Second Corinthians. Paul says, you will, ex you will accept any Jesus that comes to you. Amen. Well, we have the hippie Jesus nowadays. Yeah. The Jesus that wants to give you your heart, your, your best life now. Yep. That there's no trials, there's no tribulations, there's no. just love, sure. peace, and cuddles. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the, the truth. That's what pe that's a that's a picture people painted. So when you read the Bible and Jesus says you're gonna have trial, you're gonna have tribulation, there will be no peace on earth. They can't accept it. And when you they tell people not, this, not that's Bible. not what I believe in. That's not what I feel. Even though Jesus himself says it. Says uh, it. I watched a video and someone, or I don't know what the thing was, but I talked to a good job. And uh, we're explaining him to the, the gospel. And the thing is, like, like Crystal said, you didn't offend me because it's not your word. Remember, Ken, when we talked about the faith prosperity? The word of God offended me because right. it's the truth. Yeah, I miss, I miss I penas all day long. Exactly. It's not the Jesus of the scripture. It's not how it goes. And people will come against us and say, oh, well, you're just this, this, that. No, let me show you through the scriptures. Like Crystal said it perfect. Uh, no one's getting offended by me. Exactly. You didn't put your I word in want, there. I don't want to think that I'm an evil person mm -hmm. and that I, my deeds are wicked and I'm a hater of exactly. God. I don't want to think that. But then when I see it in the scriptures and I pray and I examine my heart, this is true. This is true. We all try to cover it up and say, no, it's not like that. But really our actions tell us differently. And we try to make up this God in our image that makes it seem like all of these things are okay. Right. But God is sovereign. He's all of these attributes that we've been talking about. So uh, it's important to have the right view of God, a high view of God. Right. We can't have a, he's side by side with us, that we're working together. He has to be high. Or he's else he's not God up. if he's side by side with you. He has to he's be a mentor. He says in uh, Psalms 50, he tells the Israelites, you thought I was like you. Amen. I'm not like you. Amen. He says, my ways are not your ways. Amen. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Amen. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so my ways are not your ways. The heavens and the earth never touch. They never get close they to each other. They never meet each other. They're no. so separate. That's what the holiness of God means, is that he's separate. He's, he's different. He is the category of what's right. He is the moral standard. When you look at the Ten Commandments, that's him. He's not following these commandments because it's the right thing to do. He is the standard. He, he, whatever God does, that's the right thing for him to do. Amen. He's not going, all right, let me follow the Ten Commandments. He, he is the Ten Commandments. Is, Amen. He, he is that standard. So it's a good point that we need to know who the God of the Scriptures Amen. is. We can't make up a God in our own image. So that was my point is... We might think that, I never was a hater of God, but if you examine the scriptures and see what he really is, you might question it. I did that when I realized the sovereignty of God, that God is in control of all things. I said, how could I love this God? Then I realized, you darling, I created a God in my own image that's just doing whatever I want him to do. That's not the God of the scriptures. Right. Uh, so I, we talked about how the fall of man affected our relationship with God. Now I want to talk about how did the how did the fall affect us us ourselves because we're made up of the the mind the heart the will this is what we're made up of. we have a yeah we have a mind we have a heart and we have a will 
So let's talk about the mind for a second. This is a lot of I hope I can keep up. There's a lot of scriptures here. I hope I could remember them all. Um, all right. The mind. Ephesians 4, 10, this the NLT version, says that their minds, their minds, all of humanity, their minds are filled with darkness. They wander they wander far from the life of God. We go far. We want to go away from God. Just like Adam did. He tried to hide himself. He's wandering from God. What does Isaiah 53 says? All of us have sheep have gone our own way. We don't want the things of God. Uh, so their minds are filled. Not a little bit, not halfway. Filled with darkness. They wander from the life. Uh, they wander from the life God gives because they closed it, their minds and hardened their hearts against him. Wow. That goes back with uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 10. That we closed our minds and hardened our hearts against this God. This God who is righteous and holy. Um, have more over here on the minds. Uh, Jeremiah 4, verse 22. The scripture was, my mom's I was laughing. <laughs> How funny it is, but how true it is. It says, For my people are foolish. They know me not. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are wise in doing evil, but how to do good they know not. That's scripture. He's saying, For my people are foolish. They know me not. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are they are wise in doing evil. But how to do good, they don't know. So Jeremiah is saying about the person who is unregenerated. Uh, unregenerated means that they were dead in their sin before we was Christians, but before the Holy Spirit lives in us. Uh, Jeremiah says that the unregenerated, unregenerated person is morally insane. That morally, but you to do good or not to do good. Uh -huh. Morals, our morals are insane. See, the I know what are morals. Uh, they have no spiritual understanding of how to do good or righteousness, but we're brilliant when it comes to doing evil. Since you're brilliant, you're, you're, um, you think of ways of how to chorav, how to mm -hmm. do. Instantly, there's a scripture here. Can I be? Can I be? Cannot, very, very fast. Um, let's see. I find scriptures here. I'm trying to find that one. Me, no, it's in Psalms, verse 7. Okay. Psalms, verse 7. Verse 14 it says, Behold, the wicked person conceives evil and, this is a crazy word, and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. Amen. Wow. That's scripture. It says, The wicked conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. Wow. So now that makes me think of myself, of course, that. When I want to shut up or do something, I don't have to spend hours and hours pondering how to do it. I could come up with it like this within my within mind. I already finished. How am I going to do it? What's the ending result and all of these things? And then I think it in my mind, and then I come forth, and it comes forward. It, it happens, and it works most of the time. And I'm so proud of myself, Dali. I got this this for free. I showed them kako. I get them kako. And it works. So it all starts in the mind because it's sinfulness. Our mind is corrupted. We don't know how to do good to us. It's good though. It's real hard, Dali. Like, how could I learn how to be nice? How could I learn how to be say something good? Naturally, I don't have to teach myself how to not think wrong. It just comes up. There's most of the times where I'm telling, how do I think like this? What made me think of this? How did I go that far? This is because of our sinfulness. Because we died spiritually and something bad happened to us. When Adam sinned, it fell upon all of us. Through one man's disobedience, all were made sinners. So every one of us is born like this with this evil nature where we just want to do wrong things. Uh, there's another one on the mind. The, the Second Corinthians four, fourteen. The, nat the natural person does not accept the things of God. They are folly to him. So the things are God. The things of God is saying here is dealing most. The things of God, dying it, dealing most good. Oh, I don't, I don't need that. But it's folly. It's craziness. And this goes back to the scripture. 
that, that, we're, um, that we don't have no understanding of how to do good, or how to seek for God, but it's craziness to us. Um, he is unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Romans 8, verse 7, The mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for he does not submit to God's law. Indeed, he cannot. That's one of my favorite scriptures to show this, because in that scripture, Romans 8, verse 7, says you're dealing with the mind, you're dealing with the hostility towards God, and you're dealing with how you won't be able to submit to God's law. The mind that is set on the flesh, the mind that is set on me, the my mind is set on what I can do. I'm out to make myself a better person. I don't care about who's around right. me. My mind is set on me, and that's it. So if a mind is set on myself, my mind is going to be hostile to God. That's what it says here. It's hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So it does not submit to the law. God's law is saying for us, be holy, for I am holy. We're going to say no. Uh... I don't want to, and I can't. I can't submit to God's law. God is going to tell us, repent. We're going to say, no, I don't want to. I don't, why should I repent? I don't want to. Right. I want my sin. I want to do these things. So God is going to say, come. And we're going to say, no. This is how bad the sinner is. It's very bad. Uh, there's another thing. Proverbs 21, verse 10. <clears throat> The soul of the wicked desires evil. Look at how straight out that is. Exactly. Straight, straight to the point. Out. Proverbs 21, verse 10. The soul of the wicked desires evil. It doesn't desire God there. Then Romans 3 says that no, no one seeks after God. So rather than seeking after God and good, and good things, we seek after evil and wicked and anything that's not God. Right. Whatever will benefit me, I want to seek after That is the mind. There's so much on the mind here that I can't even see. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 36, verse 1 through 3. <clears throat> Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters in his own he flatters himself in his own eyes that his iniquities can't can't be found. And uh Hate, the hate of his mouth are troubled and deceit has ceased to act wisely. He has seeked to act wisely and do good. He plots trouble bef he plots trouble while in his bed and he sets himself in a way that is not good and he and he does not and he does evil. So what's it saying here is that before we even get out of bed, they think, we plan ways of how to do evil. Right. We plan ways of how to hurt someone, how to choraz, how to do, just in the bed. Exactly. It, it, when, before we get out of bed, I think, I think of ways how to do How to make ways. money, how, how to, to money. provide for your family, so I think yeah. it obvious. You understand? And it's always something evil. Exactly. It's never it's something, never something it's honest. honest. It's always, yeah, yeah, 100%. It's amazing. The Bible says that we're naturally children of wrath. Naturally, we're children of wrath. Naturally, we follow the course of this world, and we don't seek for God, and we do all of these things. We do everything that's against God. Everything that we can do is that is against God, even make up the first command, you shall have no other gods before me, we was talking about earlier. We make up a God in our mind. We ourselves could be that God. We could put ourselves on that beautiful, shiny place, and I want to do everything to please myself. Or even our kids, our kids too. It could be like that. We could put anything before God rather than submitting to Him. So it's a big thing, so our mind is corrupted. We think of ways real fast that it's amazing. Pray God change that from all of us. Our mind can think of things fast and we, can, we give birth to it. And it goes, it goes. Whatever we plant in our mind, we act on it. This is why God says, Think the thoughts that are pleasing, that is good. I believe it's in Ephesians. To say whatever is pleasing, whatever to glorify God. Think these thoughts. Because naturally we don't think these. It's easy for us to, to think about disaster. But it's hard for us to keep our minds on God. Seek Him first, the kingdom of God, and everything will be added. God has to constantly remind us to seek uh, after righteousness. Because we're just so naturally seeking after the bad. Exactly. It's hard to teach my daughter 
good. Well, she's already, my son and my daughter, they're already bad. I don't have to teach them to lie or to do, they already know it. Yeah. There's, there's a nature and there's a sinful nature. Uh, let's talk, of, now that we talked about the mind, let's talk about the heart. And this has a lot of scriptures. The heart is basically the control system of our whole being, our, our heart. Right. Whatever we want in our heart, the heart wants what it wants. Exactly. That's all. Uh, uh oh. The Bible has a lot of bad things to say about the heart. There's a lot of people that say, well, Shanav and they will boy ilo, so God yai, God yai. Right. I know that this is right because my heart tells me. We can't go by our hearts because I know all of you know. What does the Bible say about our heart? First heart is deceitful, it's evil, it's. it's not the, even the Bible. In Proverbs it says, lean not on your own understanding, but follow, you know, and seek God and all. The heart is deceitful above all. It's, it's, it's evil at the core. It's flesh. It's natural sin is in within the heart. That word, uh, I go by what my heart tells me. I know I feel it because it's in my heart. Jeremiah 17, 9, you said it. The heart is deceitful above all things. Mm-hmm deceitful it lies to you exactly and it's desperately it's a wicked desperately sick it says yeah look at what else the, so uh, mark 7 verse 21 through 23 says that the heart on the heart being evil mark 7 21 through 23 from within for from within from within out of the heart from out of the heart comes evil thoughts, morality, theft, murder, adulterer, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they they are what defile a person. So if anybody knows what's going on in Matthew, uh, Mark 6, is that the Pharisees are saying, why does your disciples not wash their hands before they eat? Jesus can tell us not those words, not what comes in. Go, that's what, that's what they, it doesn't what that goes into your heart that makes it defiled. It's what comes out of the heart that defiles. So Jesus is saying here, the heart is evil. It's full of evil. And these are just a few. Deceit, murder, this, this, that. Uh, murder. Murder is a good one. Now, a lot of us could say, oh, well, I never murdered anybody. But Jesus says, I tell you, you've heard it said to you. Whoever commits murder, uh, whoever kills their brother is a murderer. Whoever hates their brother is a murderer. Amen. Yes. But I tell you that if you hate your brother, you're a murderer at heart. So when we look at ourselves and say, well, maybe I never murdered everyone, or I never committed adultery, or I never did these things, the Bible says that, well, if you think it, you are. It's coming through. If you tell your brother, I hate you, if you have holy on your brother and your sister, the Bible says you're a murderer. You just murdered. James 2.10 says that if you broke one law, you are guilty of breaking them all. Even if you just thought in your head, I hate my brother, or said something, or if we commit, committed adultery in our hearts, now we stand condemned in front of God because we broke his law. And though we physically didn't do it, we thought it in our heart and we thought about how to do it. It goes back to, to that we conceive sinful thoughts. We think about how to hurt that person. It's... It's an ugly truth. That's why it's called the ugly truth. That's why, that's why it also said how many times tried to hit my brother. Seven times, seven times. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, there's a lot on the heart here. Let's see if we could go through it. Um, Take time. All right, we read Jer- Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Uh, Genesis 8, 21. The intentions of man's heart is evil from his youth. From his youth. Amen. So it's not like we... Pre- progressively, but I get more eviler and more evil. That's true in a sense, but from the from the youth is saying that man's heart, uh, the intentions of man's heart is evil from his youth. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 11 says that the heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. Yep. Fully set, meaning I'm ready. I'm ready to do evil. I don't have to get prepared to do it. I'm fully set to do it. It's natural. Natural thing. Like waking up in the morning. Yeah. It's natural. It, it's a keno for us to, to let me pursue in holiness. Let me try not to lie. Let, it's a keno for us. Right. But it's so easy for us to lie mm-hmm. because of our nature, because of what happened in the garden. We're spiritually dead. Uh, Genesis 6, verse 5. The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and every intention of his thought is evil continuously. Continuously. It never stops. 
It's always going on to I want to do something wrong. It's never I'm doing right. this right. Uh, let's see what else. Shh. So if we say I go by my heart, your heart is deceiving you. If our heart isn't fully in what the scriptures have to say about what is truth and what is not, our heart is going to deceive us. Our heart is going to tell us, I'm good. I'm a good person. Right. Uh, I'm not that bad. But if we look at the scriptures, it's telling us a total different thing. It doesn't paint us as good little people. It paints us as haters of God. Our hearts are evil. Our hearts are deceitful and wicked. Even from our youth, even when we were small, right. we have evilness in our hearts. So it's not going to be your good work. That's going to be your no, okay. not at all. What works do we have? We have nothing but not sinfulness. Exactly. It says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whenever we feel in our heart, it comes forward in our mouth. Uh, this is why Romans 3 says that our feet, uh, our mouth is an open grave. Nothing but Jungalimos comes out of our mouths. Right. Because it comes from within. There's a root problem. The tree is known by its fruit. So if the root is Jungalo, unregenerated, exactly. evil, what's going to come forward? It's all ugliness. Exactly. So the heart, when we say our heart, I feel in my heart, it's like this and like this. I'm in, I'm in your heart. It's really not. It's really not good. Let's see what else. Uh, I'm going to talk about the will. This is so if our heart is, like it says right here, the soul of the wicked desires evil. If my heart is desiring evil and ugliness, my will, my, what's another word for will? Like desire. No, another word for will. For will? Intentions or whatever you want to do. Coming forward. Does anyone here know what's another word for will? <laughs> you know this term, free will. It's I do what I want to do. Yes, that's true. We all make choices. We chose to come here tonight. I chose to do this, to do that. Amen. I could choose to close this Bible, open this Bible. That's right. We have choices. But our roots of where our desires come from. Why do I want to drink that water? Because I'm thirsty. My desire is I'm busted to drink that water. Right. Uh, but if our desires now is, is not after God, we're not going to seek Him. Our will isn't going to be to seek God. Our will is, like Proverbs says, desiring wickedness evil. Bali, I'm going to talk about uh, Romans 8, 7. We're hostile to God. We desire evil. My, my desire is set on myself and my sin. So I don't want God. I want my evil. Um, when it comes to the will, Jeremiah 13, 23. Jeremiah 13, 23. This is a good scripture. Oh, you know what? I'll go to that later. Sorry. Uh, when it talks about our will, our free will, free will. Right. Hold we on. have a misconception about free will all the time. I think we, we're a disaster about free will. But uh, we have this idea, like I said, I could choose to pick up this Bible. I could choose to, we make all those wills, but the desire, our intention is led by our will. Whatever I put my mind to, I'm going to use my will to go after it. So if my will, like the Bible says, is not after God, is it to choose God, then our will is not going to want God. He doesn't want God. He cannot seek for God, the Bible says. Uh, so our will is to do evil. Our will is enslaved to sin. It's enslaved to sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 20 says, we were slaves to sin. Jesus himself says, John 8, 34, Jesus answered and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Now, in this context, it's so interesting. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the Pharisees. He's telling them, your will is to do the, the will of your father, the devil. And you are enslaved to sin. And the Pharisees get real mad. We was never enslaved to nobody, to anyone. He was never enslaved. Yeah. No, why do I have to be set free? Because he says, if the sun sets you free, you're free. Well, why do I? I? I was never enslaved to nobody. But if we know the history of what the Bible says, they were enslaved to Egypt. They were enslaved to King Nebuchadnezzar. Who else? Was the, at this point, as they're talking, they're they're governed by Roman Empire. So this they are it. enslaved, and they're saying we're not enslaved. So when we tell someone, you don't have the will to choose to God, for, to choose to seek God. 
yeah, you might, should, you, in your will, you're free to do this and that, but when it comes to God, you don't want to seek after him. Yeah. You cannot seek after him. They'll say, no, I'm free, I'm this, I'm that. Right. But the Bible says that you're enslaved to your sin. You want your, your you have this ball and chain, and you want, and you're, you're, exactly. you want sin, but you like being there. It's not like, you're a dolly, I'm trying to get up. We want to be in that state. That's what the Bible says, that we love darkness rather than light. Uh, so, so much easier to do that. It's the truth. So much easier, yeah. Uh, so we're slaves of sin. Jesus, I mean, Jesus says it himself. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Well, Paul says it in uh, Romans 6.20, you are enslaved to sin. Colossians 1.21 says you were once alienated in mind, doing evil, hostile in mind, doing evil de deeds. Uh, so when it comes to our will with God, we believe that we have a free will. But when it comes to God... Where our will, our desires, is enslaved to sin. So no one is able to seek after God. This is why Jesus has to say in John 6, 44, You are not able to come to me unless it is granted to you by the Father. He says it again in John 6, 30, uh, John 6 65. He says, I have told you again, unless it is granted to you by the Father, you cannot come to me, he says. So he says it two times because they're grumbling amongst themselves. He says, why are you grumbling? You can't come to me unless it is granted to you by the Father. Unless you are set free from your will. Unless you're set free from your evil desires and the root of evilness that's in you. You can't even come to me. You won't even want to come to me. A lot of people might think, so you're telling me that if I want God, if my will is to serve God, that I can't come to him because I don't have this free will? No, the reason why you even want to seek after God today is because he changed your will. For you no longer want the things of this world, but you want God. The reason why we can even say that is because of Him. Because left to myself, I don't even I don't want to do none of this. I want to be in my sin. I don't want to seek for God. It's easier for me to stay in my sin rather than struggle to fight and to pursue a life of holiness in God. So the will is evil. Our free will is enslaved to sin and is evil. <clears throat> and there's nothing that we could do about it. Now we go to Jeremiah 13, verse 23. Jeremiah 13, verse 23. It says, Can an Ethiopian change the color of his skin? Can a leopard take away his spots? So he's saying, can an Ethiopian? I think it's a color wall, I'm not sure. But can he change his skin? No. Can a leopard that animal with the spots. Can he change his spots? And he says here, neither can you start doing good for you have always done what is evil. So this is talking about a sinner who can't even change his will unless, we read earlier, unless it is granted to him by the Father. So it's an inability. The sinner can't, I can't change myself. I can't, I don't want to change myself. Look at what it says here. Uh, Isaiah 64, verse 6. All of us have become, become unclean, and our righteous deeds are as filthy garments. All of us wither like the leaf, and our iniquities take us away like the wind. So he's saying naturally we are unclean, and we can't change that about ourselves, because if we try to change it with our good works, and say maybe if I do this or maybe if I do that, then maybe my I could cover it up with my good works, but naturally I'm unclean and those good works will be, will be tainted by my jungalimos. Paul Washer uses this uh, this little story about if you get, I don't know if anybody ever seen what a leper is. But if you if he was to go to this place where they sell these beautiful garments and try to cover it up, he'll be alright for a couple of with a minute or whatever, but eventually all the pus and all the blood is going to come through. That is what Isaiah is saying, is saying. We could try to do that with our good works, but our righteous deeds are filthy rags. It, the works will become ugly. It'll become chungalimos because naturally we're unclean. And then Amen. Job, Amen. Oh. Uh, then Job is saying, Job says, can anything clean 
come out of something that is unclean. Right. Nothing good could come out. If we're naturally unclean, whatever we do is going to be unclean also. Right. So if I want to go feed the homeless, and if I'm not saved, and if I'm just depending on me going to feed the homeless, those good works are not good right. because I'm naturally unclean. My heart is defiled. My heart is evil. My mind is evil. So everything I do is going to be corrupted. So what this scripture is saying in Jeremiah is that we are unable. It says if an Ethiopian can't change his skin, if the leopard can't take away his spots, then we can't even do good because we're just prone to doing what's evil. Right. It's hard to take us out of that unless it's a work from God. Amen. So we talked about the mind, the heart, the will. Okay. Uh, the mind, the heart, the will. And now I want to talk about that this applies to everybody. Uh, Romans 3.23, I think it is, all have sinned. Amen. All have sinned. All of us have done this. Every one of us. My daughter already. Baby. Right. Babies. She's already got this because of the sinful nature. And this is what scripture says. And then I see it coming through in her. I, I read about total depravity all day long in the Bible, but then I see it in my heart. I see it in my kids. I see it in other people. Right. We could be on a prayer line all day long. Yeah. We just now did a prayer line all day long. And uh, we could be in church all day long. And people could say, yes, we need the love of God. Yes, we need to do this. But if you tell that person, we need to have order. We need to have this. Uh, let's have order. Yeah. Let's, have let's just not. Yeah. Let's have order on the line. They're ready to kill me. Exactly. They're ready to kill. Because I'm saying, let's have a little order. Because yeah. everyone's talking on top of each other. So I'm saying, let's try to have a little order. Oh, they want to kill now. What happens if we were just praying? They wanted like, the love of God. They changed like that. So you could change. Cha instantly change. Yeah. You could go from loving that person to if that person looks at you bad. Oh, you're out to get me. Exactly. Oh, you want to fight me. And we're ready to fight back. So it, it's... We have a big problem. So all of us, everyone is born this way. All are sinners. Romans 3, verse 10. No one is righteous. No one is righteous. Not even one. Look how he has to emphasize. None is righteous. Wouldn't that be enough? He just says, none is righteous. But he goes on to say, not even one. Because per my people might go on to say, well, maybe that's all these persons. All these people. But there is someone. I'm righteous, whatever. But he has to add, not even one. So there's billions and billions of people on this earth. Billions of people on the earth. And G Paul is saying, there's not one of those billions of people that's not that's uh, righteous. Not Amen. even one. Not even one there is righteous. He goes on to say that they don't even understand. They don't even understand, right? The natural person doesn't seek after God, he says. When we see natural person, but we think, oh, he's the natural person. The natural man isn't good. The natural man is the, he's naturally sinful. He's naturally evil. So when we see the natural man doesn't understand, he's talking about the ones whose heart is evil, whose will is corrupted and evil. So the natural man isn't a good guy. He's a bad guy and a hater of God, an enemy of God. So he says, no one is righteous, no, not one. All folly is bound up in the heart of a child. Psalms 51 verse 5 says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Look at that. In sin did my mother conceive me. So, my girl will be one years old. The girl is a sinner. That's a, this is what the Bible tells me about my daughter. She said she's a sinner. It's amazing. And that folly is bound up, bound up it's in the heart of a child. My daughter, if I don't give her her bottle, if I don't give her food, look right now, she wants to bust free. She wants to be set free. She doesn't want to be restrained. Look at that. That's the heart of the sinner. So I was brought forth in iniquity and sin, and my mother did conceive me. Psalms 58 verse 3 says, The wicked are entangled from the womb. From the womb. Psalms 58 verse 3. The wicked are entangled from the womb. They go astray from birth speaking lies. From birth speaking lies. Look at that. You don't have to teach the kids to lie. It's there. It's there in the nature. My son lies to me. Where did you learn how to do that? Where did you learn how to do that? It's just, it's just there. It's just there. I have to teach him. Don't lie to me. Don't do that. He wants to fight with me. 
This person isn't just sick, though. He just needs a little help. This person is dead in their trespasses and sins, and at their bottom of the ocean, and they like being there. I want to be here. I don't want to seek after God. So we have a, a like Paul Washer said, that we're more our humanity is more dangerous than the, hum, the, the animal kingdom. So we're violent, but we're dead in our sins at the bottom of the ocean, and unless something happens, we will stay there forever. We will be happy staying there. And left to ourselves, we don't want to be saved. We don't want to seek for God. So God has to do something. It's only up to God at this point. We really need the grace of God to come and to save us because we are not our own Savior. We, we store up wrath all day long. The Bible says that the more we sin, the more wrath is being stored up. We store up and one day, God will release his wrath on the sinners. So we're left to ourselves, we're hopeless, and we're done for. So we really need God to be the one to intervene on our behalf and to help us. So this is where Bonnie's gonna take over. So pray that it bless you girls.